That's because we have a relationship. I can talk to God. I don't even got to pull out my phone. I can just look up. Oh my goodness, I can't. There's so many. Oh, they're not gonna do that. They're not gonna do that anymore. When I say it's a big step for me to be out here right now, I hate birds. See, that's God's approval. That's God's approval on this video. The bird flew away. Praise the Lord, everybody. It is Jesse J here, and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. If you have not subscribed, I know we just did the beginning of the video, but go ahead and subscribe because you're going to want to subscribe. You're going to want to subscribe. Um, thank y'all for clicking. Today, as y'all can see, I'm outside. And I never do that. But we're doing another Bible study. Today we're going to be studying Psalms 119. Now I know you're like, hold on. Hold on, hold on. This is going to be a long video if we're about to study the whole Psalm 119. It might be part one and part two. I'm going to try to get through it as fast as I can, but it is food to my soul right now. And then, I've been planning to do this video, right? Then I go on you version this morning. Tell me how my friend Jada done highlighted from Psalm 119, confirmation. Then, a few weeks, a few weeks ago, not a few weeks ago, about a week ago, a week and a few days ago, me and my friend Lamaria had told me that she did a whole study on Psalm 119. Then me and my friend started reading it together. Oh my goodness, y'all. I love this. Y'all gonna see me doing this the whole video because I don't like birds. <laughs> I don't like them. Okay. Anyways, I hope it's not too noisy. But let me go ahead and get into it so this video won't be long. So if you have your Bibles, please turn with me to Psalm one. 19 and it reads blessed are the undefiled mm -mm, this ain't gonna work so i'm gonna make this a scripture shower version because if i sit here and break down every section this just ain't gonna work blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the lord blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart which reminds me of first timothy chapter 4 and verse 15 which reads meditate upon these things give thyself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear unto all and at this time of my life when i first started reading it god was dealing with me about meditating on his word um and just giving myself wholly to him and letting his word just be in my heart and lead me and guide me throughout the day so that was so good with your whole heart Give your whole heart to God and let his word be your delight all throughout the day. Just meditate on the scriptures all throughout the day. That was good to me. Four, thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. And by that I wrote pray because we need to pray that. Pray, Lord, help me to keep your, your precepts diligently. Then verse five is something that I say so much because it's so good to me. It says, oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Because that is a whole feeling right there. Like, Lord, I wish I had no other choice. Like, oh, that my ways were directed to keep your statutes. I want to be right. I just want my ways to be directed in your path. Keep me in your path. Way, Lord. Verse number nine. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. With my whole heart I have sought thee. There goes the whole heart again. One thing I started doing was writing every time it said whole heart. Every time it stressed whole heart. Because this is a heart thing. He's got to have your whole heart. But he says, with my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And I have the Holy Ghost. So I have decided that I will not sin against him. Amen. But that's another thing that I pray. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. God, keep it in my mind, God. If I slip, which I believe, like, I believe that he will not suffer my foot to be moved. If I slip, it's a choice. Lord, if I start to lean, if I start to lean in the wrong direction, Lord, let me not wander from your commandments. Bring it back to my remembrance. Do it, God. Do it. 
Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed? It's important to take heed, y'all. It's important to do what it takes to stay clean. And um, it reminds me of Luke 21 and 34 that talks about not surfeiting and not being overcharged with the things of this world or, or he's going to come upon you unexpectedly. You know, and it's important to not surf it and just do unnecessary things to feed our flesh. But we need to make sure that we are taking heed and doing what it takes to stay right and stay in his path because this is a wicked world. And there's a lot of distractions. We have to make sure that we are praying. The devil is not playing no games with us. Okay, he's coming with new creative ways to get us off track. So we have to make sure that we are taking heed. Disconnected from social media when, it, when we need to. Um, just cutting off certain social medias that we need to get off of. Like me, I don't do Snapchat no more. Because I know that like, it's so unnecessary. It's not beneficial. It's not feeding my spirit. I don't need that anymore. It's doing absolutely nothing for me. Nothing. So those things that are doing nothing for you, then things that are like, wait, God wants to use us. But sometimes I heard evangelist Ashton McCurdy say, sometimes God can't use us because so many other things are using us. We're connected to so much other stuff. So take heed, cleanse your way. Hallelujah. Lord, I thought I was going to be quick. But I'm all, I'm only at verse 9. Verse 15, I will meditate in thy precepts. That reiterates the point that I said before. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. Lord, pray, I wrote pray. Lord, help me not to forget your word. Help me not to forget your word. God, bring it back to my remembrance. And thank God for the Holy Ghost because he will do just that. Woo! Verse 17. Oh, Lord. Neighbors going to think I'm a little strange. But verse 17 says, Deal bountifully with thy servant that I may live and keep thy word. Open thou mine eyes. God, give us a spiritual eye, God. Give us a spiritual eye. Take the beam out of our eye. Make sure that we're not looking through dirty lenses. But help us to see the picture clearly, God. Open thou mine eyes that I may behold the wondrous things out of thy law. Deal bountifully with thy servant. That is what I pray now. Every time I pray, y'all, in the morning when I hit my knees, at the nighttime when I hit my knees, deal bountifully with thy servant. I need him to deal with me. I need him to give me a word. Because this thing is personal. I can't go based off of what you're dealing with my friend about. I can't go based off of what you're dealing with my pastor. Well, you know, he deals with my pastor so that my pastor can give to him what he was dealing with me because it's for me. But still, I this thing is personal. I need you to deal with me, Lord. I need you to show me that you're with me. I need you to show me myself. Deal with me personally. Show me what season I'm in. I challenge you all to discern what season you're in. Praise God. I, with the help of an evangelist for my church, I have discerned what season I'm in, and it has really helped me. It has helped me, and it has directed me, and it has helped me to really buckle down and not be playing with God. I mean, huh. so pray God deal bountifully with that servant and I'm a witness y'all. If you pray for him to deal with you, he'll start to deal with you. And it's not always going to feel good y'all. I'm a witness recently. You going to cry. You going to cry. It's going to hurt sometimes when he really starts dealing with you because the closer you get to God, the more you have to let go of them things that are not like him. And sometimes that doesn't always feel good. He burns out the stuff that's not like him and fire does not feel good. Heat does not feel good, but it's for your good. Thank God for the dealing. Thank God for the dealing. Verse 23 and verses 24. Princes also did sit and speak against me, but thy servant did meditate in thy statutes. Thy testimonies also are my delight and my counselor's glory to God. And God had me reading this because he knew what was about to happen to me. I didn't know what was about to happen, but God knew what was about to happen. And he wanted this already in my spirit. He was already telling me how to get through it. Princess did speak against me. And what I wrote was meditate in opposition. He was in a place where princes were, David was in a place where princes were speaking and sitting against him. But what did he do? He meditated in his statutes. If you meditate in his statutes, you're going to do right. There's no way you're going to be remembering that God said, love your neighbor as yourself. And you're going to be bad, mean to your neighbor. There's no way, unless you're out of his will, unless you're really not saved. But there's no way you could be saved and be thinking about how God said that you're not supposed to lie. And you mess around and lie. There's no way. So even in opposition, if you meditate on his precepts, you are going to be okay. Thy testimonies are also my delight and my counselors. No, no slack on the therapist. No slack on the on the um, 
on the um on the counselors and the people who got their degree on the psychologists. But listen, can't nothing counsel me like this. I'm trying to tell you, and God had already put that in my spirit because lately I've been in a place where God has been in a separation season. And I'm trying to tell y'all I'm a people person. I'm a people person. I love people. I love my friends. So like when God did that to me, I was, I'm like, Lord, I can't believe you did me like this. Do I really need this right now? Do I really need this? And God is saying yes. And I can see that I need it and that it's for my good. Y'all, yes, I cried. Cry a lot. God has to separate you sometimes for his purpose. Sometimes you have to consecrate. And when you consecrate, that's when you give yourself wholly to God, solely for his will solely for his will not for you it's not about self-satisfaction so you have to cut off those things that please you that are for you and y'all and sometimes it's like you know you want to turn to your friends you want to go to your friends you want to tell somebody i was in a place where i had so much going on and i just wanted to tell somebody and i needed some i felt like i needed someone to help me but let me tell you something this helps me this counsels me can't nothing counsel me like this can't nothing counsel me like this. And I cried, but now I'm in a place where I realize nothing but the word could have helped me. I delighted myself in him and he directed my paths. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 25 says, my soul cleaveth unto the dust. Quicken thou me according to thy word. The biblical definition of quicken is to be revived and to refresh. And then verse 28 says, my soul melteth for heaviness. Strengthen thou me according to thy word. And um, that's good to me. That's good to me. Because that's a real place. I don't know about y'all, but my trials be trialing. You know, my pain be paining. My hurt be hurting. Okay, why am I doing this with my hand? And so sometimes I feel like David. Some would say it's dramatic. But my soul be cleaving to the dust. You ever just laid in your prayer corner? You know, there's the there's the position where you're on your knees like this. But then there's the position where you lay prostrate, flat on your belly. Have you ever been there? Has your soul ever cleaved to the dust? <laughs> Has your soul ever cleaved to the dust? Has your soul ever melted? Have you ever felt like your soul was melting for heaviness? Because let me tell you something. It's going to be hard. That's why he said endure hardness as a good soldier. He wouldn't say that if it wasn't going to be hard. It's very hard, but we have all we need to get through it. If you deposit, if you pray right, if you live right on a daily basis, you have all you need to get through it. So I pray my soul cleave it to the dust. Pray the scriptures, y'all, and I pray the scripture. Lord, my soul cleave it to the dust. Quicken thou me according to thy word. And then the Holy Ghost will remind you that he is not slack concerning his promises. Quicken thou me according to the word. And he will say that he will not leave you nor forsake you. I'm trying to tell you, the Holy, he'll tell you, Lo, I am with you always. Even until the end of the world. He that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone because I always do the things that please him. Oh, um, another one. It's this psalm. Y'all, as y'all can see, I know the scriptures. I know them. But I'm a Bible scholar loading. So, like, I can only tell you a little bit about where they at right now. I'm studying, though. I'm studying. I'm going to be a Bible scholar, okay? I'm going to be a Bible scholar. But um, somewhere in Psalms, it might be 9 and 10. It might very well be 9 and 10. It says that he has not forsaken those that trust in him. And then I'm reminded, he'll remind you that the devil seeks to wear out the saints. That's all it is. But just trust in the Lord. And if you resist the devil, he will flee. I'm trying to tell you, this is the kind of stuff that happens. It comes to your mind whenever you decide to pray the scripture. And when you pray, Lord, quicken on me according to thy word. Strengthen on me according to your word. He'll put strength in you. God will put strength in you so that you can endure. You may cry, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You're going to go through the valley of the shadow of death. You know, the fiery darts are going to come, but your shield is going to quench them all. Hallelujah. But let me move on because I can stay right there. I can stay right there. But it says in verse 27, make me to understand the way of thy precepts. So shall I talk of thy wondrous works. And the other day, my pastor broke it down. He preached in Chocowinity, North Carolina. Hallelujah. Where I was revived and quickened and blessed. God bless my soul. He blessed my soul. But my pastor preached there and he broke it down. I'm not even going to go to my word. 
um, go to my notes. I want to see how well I retained it. But he spoke of knowledge because it's important to have knowledge and to know your God. God wants us to know him. We need knowledge, a knowing of God. And you know, they that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. When you really know your God, you won't sin against him. When you really know your God, you're going to trust him. So it's important to know your God. I thank God I know my God on a personal basis. I talk to him, y'all. Y'all may think I'm deep, but I'm going deeper. I'm going to, <laughs> it takes deepness to make it in this world. So I'm going to be deep. So yes, when I'm in Food Lion, when I'm at the grocery store, when I'm going throughout my day, I, you may see me looking to the hills. You may, and you may see me just talking to God, but that's because we have a relationship. You know, if I can text my friends, I can talk to God. I don't even gotta pull out my phone. I can just look up. But anyways, I promise y'all I'm not playing. I can really go up right now. But then also knowledge is a accumulation. Accumulate them. Know a lot of them, study them, accumulate them. Then you have to get wisdom. Wisdom is now taking what you've accumulated and having principles and applying them. Then, because wisdom is the principal thing. So wisdom also gives you them principles and helps you to, you know, now that you have knowledge of it, to help you, you know, okay, how do I put this into work? You know, it helps you understand where this applies. You know, okay, now that I know this, now that I'm in this situation, wisdom tells me that this scripture applies here. You know, and then understanding, understanding teaches you how to apply this scripture right now. Understanding teaches you how to live what you know and how to live these principles. Come on, hallelujah, hallelujah. So it all goes hand in hand, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. So that's what that scripture reminds me of. Make me to understand that way because we have to understand it in all thy getting. Get understanding because understanding helps you apply. Understanding helps you to walk in his ways. It keeps you in his path. Way, Lord. If y'all don't know, that song has been in my spirit. Thy judgments, verse 13, thy judgments have I laid before me. Pray that, Lord, help me to lay your judgments before me. I, I literally was just like, I know it looks crazy, but I, I imagine his ways laid before me. Keep them before me, God. Hallelujah. Teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statutes. Another thing I started doing was writing every time he said, teach me. God has to teach us. Ask God to teach you. Ask the Holy Ghost to teach you. He will. He will, because there's some stuff that only he can teach you. And I promise he's a teacher. Verse 49. Remember the word unto thy servant upon which thou hast caused me to hope. This is my comfort and my affliction, for thy word hath quickened me. Y'all, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but his word quickens us. It revives us, and his word is our comfort. And that's why God has to be your source, because people cannot be your comfort. If people are your comfort, people are not always going to be there. So if people are the only way that you can be comforted, if... um. I don't know, social media is the only way that you can comfort. You can't fill the void with anything else. This has to fill every void because this is the only thing that's constant. This is the only thing that's constant. So whenever the afflictions come, this will cause you to hope. Therefore, I have hope. Great is thy faithfulness. It is because of his mercies that we are not consumed. It is because of this that I'm not consumed. I would have been consumed. And there's a verse that talks about that that's coming up i would have been consumed i was almost consumed but your word quickened me proud have had me in great derision once again people are going to try you life is going to try you whatever your trial is it's not always going to be people sometimes it's poverty Sometimes it's loneliness, sometimes it's family, sometimes it's your marriage, sometimes it's your job. Whatever your derision is, don't decline from his law. Remember his judgments. He says, I remember thy judgments and comforted myself. Come on, somebody. You can comfort yourself in the word. You can encourage yourself in the word. My statutes have been my songs in the house of my pilgrimage, y'all. This thing is a journey. We are a pilgrim passing through is what the old folk used to say. And y'all, this journey, this journey is something. But your statutes have been my songs while I'm traveling through. They keep me going. They my gas in my gas tank. <laughs> 
Look, y'all, I know my analogies be kind of weird, but I got to make it make sense to me. Okay. I got to get, I got to revelate it. That's how God deal with me different. He deal with me different, y'all. So that's what I get from that. He's my gas and my gas tank while I'm going through this journey. He's my gas and my gas tank. Okay. <laughs> I remember thy name, O Lord, in the night. The devil tries you at night. He really do. He really do. We've been indoors for night, you know? It's something about that nighttime. But in the night have I kept thy law. I have remembered thy name in the night. This I had. You were only my gas in my gas tank. I only could remember your name. I only was okay. I only could comfort myself. I only had hope. This I had because I kept thy precepts. This is a privilege. This only comes with keeping his precepts. You got to deposit. You got to give to get. If you don't deposit into your relationship with God, you're not going to have no hope. You're going to be hopeless. I've been hopeless before. And hopelessness is horrible. It's a bad place. But y'all, if you keep his precepts, precepts, you'll have comfort in your affliction. Hallelujah. Let me hurry. Thou art my, uh, thou art my portion, O Lord. He is enough. That's one thing I realized. God is my portion. And let me tell you, he is enough. He is more than enough. He is the source. Come on, y'all. He is all that He's all that you need. Hallelujah. Thought on my ways. My friend wrote this down to me. My friend Jada Morgan wrote this down to me. She, I thought on my ways and turned my feet onto thy testimonies. We need to think on our ways. And ways is such a good word. Because my pastor was talking the other day. He was preaching the other day. And he was like talking about some of the stuff that he had to grow from. But he didn't know the word to put on it. That's why I just say ways. Some stuff isn't a sin. Some stuff is a weight. Some mindsets. The way we carry ourselves. Ways. Think on your ways, y'all. Think on your ways. And when you think on your ways and God shows you you, turn your feet unto his testimonies. And another thing that I thought of, because he specifically saying testimonies, there's sometimes where David says statutes, but there's another time that he says testimonies. And I look at other trust translations and some of the translations, they just translate testimony back to statutes, but that's just not how God gave it to me. I believe that statutes are statutes and testimonies are testimonies. So you need, when he says testimonies, he means think about what God has done in your life. Think about what he's done in the word, what he did for Paul, what he did for Silas, what he did for the children of Israel. Think about what he did for Jacob. Think about what he did for Abraham. Think about his testimonies, y'all. His testimonies encourage you. Testimonies build faith. So think on your ways and then turn your feet unto his. You know, turn your feet unto his ways. Turn your feet unto his testimonies. Then it says, I made haste. Do it quick and in a hurry because he's coming soon. He's coming like a thief in the night. And so you need to be ready. So make haste. Don't take your time. Look, if you want him to heal you like this, change like this. Turn into his testimonies like this. Think on your ways and fix them like this. Hallelujah. Make haste and delay not to keep his commandments. And we approach verse number 67, which is good. It says, which is why our trials are so important. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now I have kept thy word. I'm going to say Salah. I'm going to say Salah because I want y'all to think about that. I want y'all, I'm going to be quiet and let that just marinate in your spirit. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. And I'm going to testify on that. Recently, one thing God has dealt with me about, before I was afflicted, I didn't always go to him first about every problem. Before I was afflicted, I leaned a little bit on the arms of flesh. But my affliction drew me closer to him. I cannot think of a trial that did not draw me closer to him. I cannot think of a trial that did not teach me how to be more pleasing in his sight, that did not burn something out of me that was not like him. The Bible talks in Isaiah, somewhere in the 40s. Um, he talks about the furnace of affliction. God will use your afflictions to burn everything out of you that's not like him. It's the refiner's fire that's going to get you fit and meet for his use. Hallelujah. So before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now that I was afflicted, I learned something from my trial. I refused to go through and not get something out of it. My trial deposited. Y'all, my trials have given me the gift of faith. 
Hallelujah. My trials have taught me how to pray and pray through. My trials have birthed gift. I'm like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I was loosed in my fire. Glory to God. Our afflictions do something for you, y'all. Work the word in it. Understand that it's for your good. 71, it is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. It is good for me that I have been afflicted. Y'all be honest. We act like God is so wrong, but sometimes the only way he can get to us is if he afflicts us. There's a reason, there is purpose in every affliction and it is good. Your afflictions keep you on your knees. Your afflictions teach you. Your afflictions grow your faith. Your afflictions do something to your relationship with God because if it had not been, if it had not been for him, only God could have helped me. Only God could have got me through this. And now that I've been afflicted, I can help somebody else. Come on, somebody. Then 73, thy hands have made me and fashioned me. Have you, do you ever just feel God working on you? Do you ever feel God just making you and molding you? How I, is it just me? I feel him, y'all. I serve a God I can feel. I feel him and I thank him for it. Give me understanding that I may learn thy commandments. 75, I know, O Lord, that thy judgments are right and that thou in faithfulness has afflicted me. He only afflicts you because he's faithful. He told you that he's going to have you prosper as your soul prospers. So he's, he has no choice but to be faithful to that. So he's going to use this trial to do that. His grace is sufficient. Even in his afflictions, he's faithful. He promised you that he would grow you. He promised you that he would take you higher. He promised you that no good thing would he withhold from you. So he's going to give you the good thing through the hard thing. <laughs> he's ministering to me. There's so much more I want to get to. There's so much more I want to get to, but we are going to stop at verse 75 and I will just do a ver a, um, a that's a lot y'all. I got all the way to verse 75. I wonder how long it took me though. And God let all the birds go away. Hallelujah. Let me pray now. God, I thank you. I thank you for your word. I thank you for affliction, God. I thank you that your word and your statutes are counselors, your testimonies. God, they are counselors. They are our delight. Hallelujah. God, I just thank you. I thank you for your word. God, I pray that this word met just let it marinate in my spirit. Let it marinate in the spirit of every listener. Oh God, teach. Oh God, revelate it like only you can. God, encourage, quicken according to your word. Deal bountifully with your people. And I thank you now, God, have your way. Encourage. God, help us to comfort ourselves. Give us hope. God, give hope to the hopeless. God, give strength to those that have no might. And I thank you now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I hope this was good for somebody. I'm not going to do no long outro. But this was good to me. It fed me. It fed me, y'all. Um, until next time. And y'all, in my youth is coming. In my youth is coming. And I have some new faces again. And some good friends. And this one is going to be about trial. So, Psalm 119 is timely. It's timely, y'all. But thank you so much for walking, watching. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Share with a friend. Share with somebody that needs it. God bless y'all. Bye.